Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to review for you the no November 1950 edition of Your Physique with Al Stefan on the cover. Here we have a glorious photo of Alan Stefan basking in the sun. At 6 foot 225 pounds, he sported a 50 inch chest and an 18 inch arm at the age of 25. Mr. America of 1946. What an awesome photo. Fantastic. There are some really good um, articles which I'll jump to, especially the feature article. I'm going to start doing feature articles now because I think it's more interesting that way. And that is um, Reg Parks' uh, abdominals routine, which he actually uh, performed a superset of. And he would do supersets of, of um, sit-ups, as you can see here, with side bends. And the reasoning behind this was when the superset principle finally came into bodybuilding in the early 50s, which was discovered by the likes of, of uh, Reg Park and, and other Silver Era bodybuilders, was that um, the idea was to work the same musculature, but using different motions that wouldn't necessarily hit the same part of that muscle. And so, for example, with the sit-ups, which hit, uh, in, in the case of the decline sit-up, hit the lower abdominals, if this was followed by side bends, that hits the obliques, which allows you then to go back and forth between both exercises. Now, the superset that was uh, used by Reg Park in this excellent article, that classical look for physical perfection, I will share with you in another video, but I thought at least I'd share part of that superset in this. You can also see he's doing um, hanging leg raises, and uh, another exercise, which is actually taken from the Bronze Era, which was used by many strong men from the Bronze Era, and that is the bent over, the, sorry, the, the, the bent press, where you bent over to the side and press with a weight overhead. Believe it or not, Reg Park being as strong as he was, he actually incorporated this strong man exercise in his abdominals training. And that was at the end, after all his supersets, when he gave it his final, you know, his final, um, last uh, bit of energy he would put it put it all out on the bent press and that's in this ed excellent article of which i will share with you soon it's a great article that classical look for physical perfection and for your information for those of you that are aware of my collaboration with john john park um, i actually am sending him a lot of these articles because he's trying to build up his website um, these articles are of his father, written by his father, so I definitely want to help him out that way. And that's that's kind of the way that we're collaborating. We're going to be exchanging information, and soon I'll be bringing you an interview with John John Park as well. So that's a little update for you. Now, looking back at the rest of the uh, magazine, the first article I have to admit, Are You Fit for Marriage, featuring here, of course, uh, Val Njord was not of much interest to me, so I won't even talk about it. However, uh, what I really liked about the Bodybuilders Revolution, uh, this particular article focuses on Joe Wader. He's basically ranting on, it was written by Joe Wader, and he's ranting on about um, Bob Hoffman's uh, yeah, persistent campaign, we could say, to ruin the IFBB and Joe Wader. Back then, there was a war of words, between the magazines, you had Dan Lurie and Joe Wader on one side versus the AA of the IFBB versus the AAU of Bob Hoffman and the York Gang, right? And they were just, yeah, fighting each other all the time in their magazines. And and um, I have to admit that when I've read Strength and Health, the the magazine is full of accusations and and rants, and it really is tiring. And that's actually the reason why I decided to focus my channel on initially on waiters magazines because as waiter says in this article it's full of information at least these these initial articles sorry these initial issues of the 40s 50s and 60s were full of great information uh, later on of course when they became flex and muscle and fitness I, I stopped collecting them but these are really excellent and full of information and i'd rather read something that's going to be positive than something that is negative like you often find in strength and health. I just got so sick of reading all the complaints and accusations. What I also loved about this particular article was the excellent photos we find here of Steve Reeves. This is a very rare photo. I've never seen this one before. We also find some great photos of Clarence Ross, Sam LaPrinzi, 
George Bullinger, who a lot of, a lot of people say looks like uh, the dude from 90210, and I would have to admit he does. But he looks like a, you know, he's got the physique of a, almost like a Frank Zane or a Steve Davis. Very aesthetic. Here we have Leah Robert, Bob McCune, and Jeffrey LaRue, Mr. Canada. Now, we already went through that classical look for physical perfection by Reg Park, but here are some more photos for you. Here we have a 40-year-old Barton Horvath when he made a comeback. He looks pretty impressive for a 40-year-old. I mean, this guy looks thick. I mean, look at the size of those arms and the legs. It's just dead. Pretty awesome. Here we have Reg Park, another rare photo. Front double biceps and a crab pose again by Reg Park. Um, these are pretty rare and awesome photos. Making Champions. Now this I thought was going to be an interesting article, but it ended up being about the importance of water in bodybuilding. Not that interesting. I mean, yes, we need to stay hydrated. Yes, the human being is made up of about 70% water, but I think that's common knowledge nowadays, so I'm not going to go through that particular article. Here was an interesting article called Developing the Thighs by Charles A. Smith, which went through the history of the Latin machine, which I've covered, and inspired me to create that video on Dr. Gustav Sander and his um, medico mechanical gymnastic apparatuses, which I've talked about in a separate video, and how Silver Era bodybuilders used all types of equipment, including the lap machine, to shape their physiques. And uh, some excellent examples are given here of how to use not necessarily the lap machine, but a cable station to actually develop your um, your thighs, so basically your quads, your hams. And one person said it very well in the comment section, once you understand the anatomy and how your body functions, you can use almost anything to really shape your physique. So uh, the cable station is no exception here. Now here's a really interesting, historic and very informative article written again by the awesome Alan Steffen shown here with his very thick Herculean physique. And um, what I liked about it was that it talks about the initial waiter principles of what one, which is the waiter flushing method. The waiter flushing method, the principle here is to actually group all the exercises for one body part together and do them um, consecutively so that you work and exhaust that muscle part um, fast and efficiently. And uh, that's what the waiter flushing method is. And in this great article that I really, really like is that Alan Steffen gives several routines for all your different body parts. And that I will cover in great detail over the next few videos because I thought that was very similar to the information that is found uh, in Vince Gironda uh, in, his, in his course that I've recently put on my website at www.goldenerabookroom.com. The information, or at least the principle, is, is basically the same as Vince Gironda's A Muscle Has Four Sides. Uh, essentially, you're doing one exercise right after another, but only one set of each exercise, which makes the workout very fast, very efficient. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a surprise because Vince Gironda, if you know it or not, comes from the Silver Era. He actually competed uh, alongside these great Silver Era champions. So I'm not surprised that he that he continued uh, teaching these principles throughout the Golden Era. Right, so then and the next article is about the Farnese Hercules. What is the ideal physique? Another great article written by David Willoughby, one of my favorite authors of the time. And he compares the Farnese Hercules to the Silver Era bodybuilders at the time, such as Jack LaLanne, Alan Pavio, and Clarence Ross, the king of bodybuilders. Here we have some excellent examples of healthy, strong, Herculean physiques. Fantastic. Now this article I didn't think was necessarily all that important to talk about. Elementary anatomy and physiology for the bodybuilder. I'm pretty sure most of us understand anatomy and physiology uh, pretty pretty well nowadays, especially if we are trainers, we are trainees. We understand what a biceps muscle is and how it works, a triceps muscle, etc. Um, but yeah, it was interesting either way. Just to have a quick read, but I'm not going to go through it in great detail. What I really did like, though, was the uh, images here of the evolution of, of, of the species, of, of, of different species, really. How we've got uh, single-celled 
amoebas here and we've got basic um, basic uh, organisms like worms eventually becoming like jellyfish fishes um, reptiles dinosaurs caveman and all the way up to civilization right it's a pretty cool image i really enjoyed it and that's a very mystical image by itself and i'm not going to go through that but some of you may actually know what that is um, it's basically the symbol of knowledge right? anyway um, then there's a mr usa review um, on the show now this show actually was not run by the ifbb the mr usa or the aau it used to be run by bert goodrich who some claim including myself, to be the first Mr. America of all time in 1939. Here he is handing the trophy to Vic Nicoletti, who won. And that, by the way, is Reg Park's idol. Um, and uh, what I found interesting was obviously some of the photos here. We can see a very young Vince Gironda in the middle here. There he is. Let's zoom that in. God, that girl is absolutely gorgeous, I swear. <laughs> Excuse me, but I mean, I just find these women from the 50s and 60s just perfect. I mean, she's just divine. But anyway, there is a very young Vince Gironda competing, as I mentioned earlier, in the silver era. Oop, that didn't focus very well. Here we go. The high caliber of all contestants kept the judges on edge throughout the entire contest. Vince Gironda, Walt Baptist, and Floyd Page. So as I mentioned earlier, Vince Gironda uh, did compete in the Silver Era, and hence he used many of these Silver Era principles to um, teach Golden Era bodybuilders, and even uh, more recently in the in the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, he, that's, he continued these principles because they were effective. And as he always said, natural was the best way and i mean he achieved his physique naturally uh during the silver era and why shouldn't it be the same later on we also have some awesome shots here of clarence ross i'll also zoom that in for you he's doing a, a most muscular pose there pretty awesome yes yeah, so some pretty awesome awesome photos here finally we have an article on a bodybuilder that I will probably talk about in a separate video called Raul Pacheco, obviously of Latin origin. This story is interesting in that um, he also, like many of the bodybuilders from what I remember, started off, you know, really small. He's a short guy, not weighing much, and uh, yeah, he went a long way. I mean, he developed a fantastic physique. And what was more interesting was that he was actually uh, related to Anibal Lopez, a golden era bodybuilder later on. And um, I may talk about Anibal Lopez in future. He's actually still alive. And I hope that he sees this video because apparently um, Raul Pacheco was actually also kind of like his idol. Um, he, was he was related to him and he kind of got him into um, bodybuilding. So it'll be interesting to create this video, see if Anibal actually replies to me because he was a golden era bodybuilder at the time. And it might be interesting to also chat to him. So anyway, I think that's the end of this particular magazine. It is. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video, this look at Your Physique 1950, the November issue with Alan Stephan on the cover, featuring some excellent magazine articles by all the Silver Era greats. If you enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Book Home. Leave me your comments and thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like to support my work, please donate via PayPal. Become a patron. Uh, you can also donate your magazines or old books. So I, continue to, I can continue to add to my collection and share the information with you. And uh, you can always, of course, visit my website www.goldenerabookworm.com for titles uh, that are out of print of old school bodybuilding from the golden, silver and bronze era such as A Muscle Has Four Sides by Vince Gironda that's actually available as, as are many other titles um, so yeah, check it out www.goldenerabookworm.com anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video that's it for me, this is the Golden Era Bookworm bye for now